All right, good evening, everyone. I show 6 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and call to order our regular session of September 5th, 2017 at this time. First order of business we have on the agenda following the calling to order is opening prayer and pledges of allegiance to the flags of the United States and the state of Texas. And Councilmember Gutierrez will lead us in the opening prayer. If you'll join me in standing, please. Lord, sprinkle your blessings on those who gather here to discuss matters of our community. We thank you for the ability to use our minds to ensure our community prospers. Bless those who serve and those who volunteer. Bless those who teach and those who heal. Bless those who protect us and those who govern us. Bless those who work and those who play. As our meeting begins this, this evening, we pray for each person here. Give each person clarity of mind, creativity, compassion, due dil diligence, and integrity. Give them listening ears and thoughtful words. Give them wisdom and an open heart. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. And uh, I'm looking around. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I'm going to call on you just as you're fixing your, your, your belt, just to say hello. So uh, uh, Austin uh, from Troop 51, and you're here working on your citizenship, citizenship uh, uh, badge for uh, your community, community citizenship badge. So thanks for joining us. We'll be glad to have you with us this evening. All right, first thing I have on the agenda following um, that is the announcements of upcoming city events. Who has that? Very good, Ms. Gonzalez. Good evening. Um, the announcements that we have for tonight, on Thursday, September 7th, there's a groundbreaking ceremony for Founders Classical Academy at 8 o'clock in the morning at 8453 East 1518 North. It's the groundbreaking for the new edition. On Friday, September 8th, is a ribbon cutting for 3009 Hair Lounge, and that's at 4.30 p.m. It's at 2901 Ashley Oak Drive. Uh, Saturday, September 9th, is Pause in the Pool, and that's from noon to 4. This is going to be at Pickerel Park Pool. And then on Sunday, September 10th, is Pause in the Pool from noon to 4, and this one will be at Windy Swan Park Pool. Uh, next Tuesday, September 12th, we'll have a, a city council meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. On Saturday, September 16th, is going to be our Shirts Q event, formerly known as Shirts Fest. It will be down at Pickerel Park. And a couple of Save the Date items. On Friday, September 29th, will be the first star party from 7.30 p.m. to 10 o'clock at Crescent Bend Nature Park. Um, on Thursday, October 26th, is the Simonson Volunteer Appreciation Dinner at 6.30 p.m. over at the Civic Center. And October 27th through the 29th, is going to be the Skylight Balloon Fest at River City Community Church Grounds out in uh, Lookout Road in Selma. And a, a couple information about the election. October 9th is the last day for submitting voter registration application and time to vote for the November 7th election. And the last day for re requesting transfer of registration and time to vote as well. October 23rd is the first day for early voting. And uh, more information regarding early, early voting, early voting locations and times and election day locations are going to be posted on our city website. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I have announcements and recognitions by the city manager, Mr. Kessel. Mr. Kessel. Mr. Mayor, city council, uh, there's an old expression um, about, uh, about doing things that are the right things when nobody's looking. And I've uh, got a, an interesting story. One of our uh, employees, Jason Mabbitt, was actually driving on FM 3009 a, a, a little while ago and noticed several large tree branches across the road. Uh, he was at work, and he stopped to, to move those tree branches. And that's when a personal vehicle, a 4x4, stopped and pulled off safely and, and came over to help, uh, help out. 
um, apparently just a citizen helping out, which is great to have a citizen stop. Um, and then at the very end of that, that individual just mentioned that he was a public works employee off duty. And so we tracked him down. I wanted to have a shout out to uh, a new employee, Elmo uh, Bendel, uh, and he works with Doug Letbetter. And Doug, if you could pass that along, please. We really appreciate that. And, and certainly um, people do what they do uh, sometimes when, when they know people are watching, but when people aren't watching, he's got a real, a real strong character. He's a, he's a great new employee. So thank you, Doug. All right. Very good. Thank you, sir. All right, we have some new employees to recognize this evening as well, and we'll start off with animal services. Hi. Good evening. This is Patrick Ferry. He's our new animal services officer. Um, he's been in the, he was originally from Washington, D.C., has been here for 23 years. Sorry. Um, he uh, said he was um, appreciative for the opportunity to work here as an animal control officer because he has three animals, three dogs, one cat that are very important to him that are a huge part of his life. And he enjoys spending time with family, friends, in his free time, and enjoys reading and document documentary films. Very good. Well, welcome. So when we have new employees, I invite you to have a shot at the microphone if you'd like. All right. Not mandatory. Um, she stole my thunder. <laughs> I don't have much else to say about myself, uh, but thank you all for the opportunity, and uh, I've enjoyed being here for the past, I guess, about a month now. Very good. We're very, pl very pleased to have you with us. All right. Thank you. Hope you'll be with us for a long time. Thanks for joining the team. All right, next up, we've added a new paramedic. Oh. I'm sorry, EMS is not to see. We're going to do that next month. Very good. Uh, and human resources. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I am very pleased to be here tonight to introduce our new human resources manager, Lindsay Cox. Cox. I believe several of you have had the pleasure already of meeting Lindsay. Um, she has a bachelor's degree in business administration with an emphasis in human resources management. Uh, she's also achieved her designation as a certified human resources professional. Uh, she comes to us from Schlitterbaum, where she was the director of human resources for the last five years. And just, uh, I guess she's been here about two weeks now, and in that time, it's become abundantly clear the value that she will add to the organization. She is motivated, she has fresh ideas, and I'm just really excited to have her here by my side. So with that, I'll turn it over to, to Lindsay. Very good. First of all, welcome. And Thank you so much. I don't have a lot to say, but thank you guys for the opportunity. Very excited to be here and working with Jessica in the City of Shirts. Thank you. Well, welcome. Glad to have you with us. All right, next up we have Parks, Recreation, Community Services. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I have the pleasure tonight to introduce to you Mr. Jared Montney, towering behind me here. Um, he was born in Sacramento, California. He went to college in Keene, Texas at Southwestern Adventist University. He lived in Cleburne, Texas for about 10 years. Then he moved to Rockland, California to work for the city of Rockland. He was there for 14 years. Um, he has a family, uh, three kids, two boys and one girl. His hobbies are fishing, camping, and home aquaponics. Very interesting stuff. He's been married for 17 years. He's really bad but still likes doing these things, golf and cooking. Um, and he, fun fact, he worked for Muhammad Ali for two years as a groundskeeper in Berrien Springs, Michigan. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, the most interesting man in the world, Jared Montney. Indeed. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Council members, um, really honored to work here. You guys got a lot of good things going for you. I heard you landed Amazon, which is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really excited to work for the Parks Department. We've got a lot of great things coming up, and I've met some of you. Um, I just can't wait to see what we're going to do for the future. So thanks again. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. <laughs> and then Public Works. I have someone new as well. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Mr. Kessel. 
Uh, I'd like to introduce our newest employee to Public Works, Mr. Richard, uh, Richard Rodriguez. Uh, Richard was born in Temple, Texas. Uh, he was raised in Belton, where he graduated from Belton High School. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, he began his career here in the city of Church August 7th as a worker one, street worker one. He currently resides in the city of Cibolo and looks forward to working with the city of Church for many years. He enjoys going to the gym and working out and spending time with his girlfriend. Richard. Very good. Well, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Again, not mandatory, but you have a shot at the microphone if you'd like it. Uh, I just want to say thanks for uh, having me here and I'm glad to be part of uh, city of Shirts. Well, welcome. We're very happy to have you on the team. Just a moment, please. All right. Next time we have on the agenda this evening is hearing of residents, and uh, first signed up this evening is uh, Ms. Claire Layton. Layton. On 22 August, oh, excuse me. My name is Claire Layton. I live at 12231 Lost Meadows Drive, Thank which you. is part of the Shirts ETJ, Bear County. Most people think they can hear me. <laughs> On 22 August, I spoke about the freedom of speech events. Um, our freedom of speech events in this last week compel me to remind you of the last two paragraphs of that presentation. I said in part, while in our Founding Fathers Day, mode and impact of speech was limited. Nowadays, speech has many modes and words instantaneously travel worldwide. I suggested that if Congress does not protect us from insulting tweets and if people insist on showing their inability to be civil, it is un incumbent upon local forms of government to at least define what is considered acceptable speech in their community. I continued under the umbrella of freedom of speech when insults, innuendos, vitriol are uttered by anyone associated with government at any level and at any position, it reflects badly upon the government entity which they represent. I concluded by saying that it was time at the local level to declare that while the city protects the freedom of speech, the city also insists that the speech be civil, polite, and courteous. Now I must add, and truthful. Okay, how do I get this to, okay. What you see before you, excuse me, what you see before you is a Facebook posting by one of your own. A quick Google search confirmed that this is fake news. I have the documents. The truth is that Black Lives Matter Houston has been active in the leaf effort by collecting food for shelters, families, and individuals, and by gathering school supplies for kids. Additionally, on 31 August, the Independent News Daily Edition reported that members of the Antifa group were assisting with search and rescues and providing first aid. Given the truth, I have two questions. First, does posting this lie on Facebook fall under the protection of the mayor's freedom of speech pronouncements? Consider not only the content of the post, but also consider whenever, even just one of you, pass along such information without checking the truthfulness, it reflects badly on all of you. My second question is, will any of you denounce this form of hate speech? Unlike the prior incident, this posted untruth cannot be dismissed by a simple apology. Neither is this matter to be handled privately in executive session. 
to remain quiet and docile with this posting is to condone it. At the very least, all of you must publicly rebuke this action by your colleague. Not only the citizens of Schertz, but also the citizens of the surrounding communities who are member of the chamber deserve to know where the city's elected officials stand on this issue. I repeat, to remain quiet and docile on this posting is to condone it. How you react will speak, will speak volumes on your attitudes. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list this evening is Michelle Terleski. Good evening. Hi, Council Mayor. I, the uh, park with no name drove my curiosity, so I went out there like Columbus to seek the land that was called the park with no name. And I found it after going and talking to Sandy and talking to Mr. Van Zandt. Now, my question is, the parks are supposed to be accessible to the public. Are y'all going to plan on cutting the curb and allowing somebody to drive there? Or are we going to have to take our Yogi Bear picnic baskets at the convenience store and march up there to have access to that park? Or is that in the plans or whatever? It kind of caught me off guard where that, because you can't park there on Shirts Parkway. And I don't think the people in Ashley Place or Jonas Woods, you know, would permit us to park and then run up there. So I'm just curious as to how you're going to make that a park. Now, Mr. Thompson told me we could all just kind of jog up there, but I'm not into that for several reasons. One, being old, and the other one being out of shape. So that was my question for tonight. You could answer it. And, and in Mr. Van Zant's I did not get back with him, so in his defense, you know, I probably could have gotten some information from him, but he, I didn't get back with him. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and Mr. Trotsky, we'll, we'll visit with you on that, that item. Okay. Uh, next on the list is Diana Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Hi. Hi. Um, I didn't get her name. But that's why I'm here, because I'm very much offended because of this that was posted about black lives. We're doing our jobs. Do not put fake news out there because it represents the city of shirts. This does. It's telling us that we're not a team. We're not working together. I am black, and I am working for Harvey to make sure we take care of those people. So do not put anything on Facebook about black lives if you don't know what's going on. I'm talking to all of you because it's very important. You don't need any type of racial thing going on in the city of shirts. And it can happen with a misunderstanding of a simple Facebook. So I just want someone to take care of that. Apology is okay. But apology is not good on Facebook. Everybody in this world need to be apologized to for what was put out there about us, black people. We care. I care about everybody. And I want to say also that thank you guys because I have not seen of you out there. We still have problems out there in our homes. I've already spoke with Zach. He's going to take care of me. We have problems. We have another lady out of her house. She's very sick, and they have moved her out again. Please, you all take care of us. You got people working on Sundays, building houses in a new development. They're going to be just like ours, going to fall apart because they have kids out there working. No one's check on those contractors. They are there until night. They're supposed to leave at 7 o'clock, but there was Sunday morning. At 7.30, we do go to church, and we come back. That's all we can hear from the new development, and you know which one I'm talking about. And la you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Right, right, thanks. And the last one that I have, the rose. We're paying our money. On, I live on Columbia Drive. As you go down Columbia Drive, 
all the way down before you go all the way to a great person that was live on the other end of the city of the street we have holes and holes and holes we have grass growing up out there all I want to know is what we paying for if the city is not going to take care of us because I've seen better places being taken care of better than the city of shirts I was told to move here because it's a great place to live I care about shirts I want you all to care about getting it cleaned up. Get the city where we need to be. Get these raggedy cars off the street. Get these cops out there. I know you're back there. Get these cops out there. We got cars on Brookline in Fairhaven. Been, uh, been out there for a long time. We have cars with no tags on them. What are we doing? Are we representing the city of shirts or we done gave up and don't care? That's my last. Thank you all. But let's take care of the Black Lives Matter. Thank you, ma'am. Next on the list this evening is uh, David Scagliola. Dr. Scagliola. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, David Scagliola, 3418 Foxbriar Lane, Church, Texas. I was out posting some signs today, so it's uh, yeah, pretty apparent that there's a campaign going on in the city of Shirts. Uh, people ask me, well, you know, why, why are you running again? Well. It doesn't take too many trips to this uh, city council to realize that there may be an imbalance on the city council. Um, and, and it seems that two out of the three individuals on, on the ballot seem to be part of the problem versus part of the solution. On the, on, on the left-hand side, we have our uh, right candidate, uh, conservative, puts out a really good YouTube video, really nice social media campaign. Unfortunately, he's never really been on a board or a commission. And without those talking points, it's fairly apparent that he, he um, doesn't know a whole lot about governance at the grassroots level. And now on the other right, we have an individual who, well, quite frankly, I don't disagree with all the time. Um, I firmly believe that economic development is vital to sustainability and, and, um, and improvement of, of, of any community. And as far as our business community goes, I've always been a firm supporter of our business community. I've been involved with the Chamber of Commerce since it had less than 40 members. I don't agree sometimes with his other views or his other attitudes. And um, about the best way I can sum it up is, is to say that, well, sometimes it comes across as a bit self-righteous. And just because you're self-righteous doesn't mean you're always right. I know there are some critical thinkers on, on this council, but unfortunately, sometimes if a view is presented that goes against the status quo, it's belittled, maligned, or simply ignored. And that's unacceptable. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, way back when, we used to be the envy, this city council was the envy of the Metrocom. People bragged about how, how functional the city of Shirts council was. Why was that? Well, you know, we had our disagreements, sure. Uh, we uh, quibbled sometimes, but more often than not, what made us so strong is because we understood what needed to be done. Yeah, we sometimes quibble about how to go about doing it, but we fundamentally believed in what needed to be done. And we had mutual respect for one another. We could agree to disagree without belittling the ideas of another. Yeah, that's why I'm running for the city council because I'm hoping to get back. And I'm not gonna say there were glory days, but there were definitely days of a better time. And we have that opportunity again. My name is David Scagliola. I'm running for the Shirt City Council. I'm asking for your support and your vote. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next on the list this evening is Mr. Zeus. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Gumby Zeus, 528 Wayward Pass. I'm not going to highlight and go over a picture and the posting. I remember you, Ms. Kaiser, a few weeks ago when you addressed the issue with social media, and you made a comment that stuck in my head. If, why do we have to wait? until something big happened. Well, this big happened. And, and what I learned out of this 
I learned is actually not only Mr. Thompson hateful posting, but there is quite a bit of hateful people in our city. Because I got, I got all of that posting. They could take it down, but you could always screenshot it. So you get to know who those hateful group is. And that's what social media ignites. People that is not educated, if I did not post what I posted, and the reason I posted it, because what Mr. Thompson did. Apology is great. We all remember Mr. Weiner, Senator Weiner. He posted, he apologized. Slapped on the wrist, he was forgiving. All of a sudden, he did it again. We don't need that. We don't need to create the hate in our community. And, and that just educated me when I read all the posting, what they're saying about me because I posted that. It is true, folks. It is true. If you want to hide behind social media, go ahead. If you want to take shots at me, I'm going to just screenshot it, and I'm going to know if something happened. Who's the hateful group? We're creating now this group. In the community concern and, and all of that, we're creating this hateful group that will attack individuals because they think the wrong is right. The wrong is never right, and I really could care less what they post. It's the uneducated people that don't see this happen. I come to you today, you know, actually, just uh, uh, for you, Miss Black Lives Matter or NIFTA, I don't support or I don't, I'm not for or against any group. I think everybody have their opinion to share. For your information, I was discriminated against also in social media and up here at the same time. But that don't bother me, but somebody's gonna post something. Or for they post it, they attack me about what I posted, and somebody's gonna take it very serious. They could get sued, they could get charged, they could, but don't post something, it's not factual. Don't, let's send out a message that this is a good city. Shirts is a phenomenal city. I will always live up here. I will always do the right thing. And I really kind of don't care what people think when I speak the truth. Sometimes people like to hear the truth coming out of my mouth, not out of their mouth. And Mr. Mayor, we'll look at you as a leader of our city. This is an issue we have. I know you could get us through it and get us to the next level where we go back to be the best city that ever was, and the best city that is. I shall thank you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, next up is uh, Mr. Stanfield. I'm sorry, which one? Oh, very good. Howdy, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, here in support. It seems like y'all may consider the grant um, for the small business. Just wanted to thank you for the opportunity. It may or may not happen. Just the fact that uh, y'all are given the time for that, it means a lot. And um, again, I'm here in support of that. And uh, thank you so much. Can I get your name and address for the record, please? Um, my name is Hengame Stanfield. My husband and I, we own Matangas Pizzeria. We love the city. Um, and we love serving people good food and giving them a good time. We're located in 6044 FM 3009, Suite 290. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, next signed up this evening is Maggie Titterington. Maggie? Good evening, Council. Mr. Kessel? Uh, just a quick reminder that October 11th is our Meet the Candidates for the City of Shirts Council, as well as the SCUC ISD School Board. Uh, so we have sent out the notices. We still haven't gotten all responses, but so that's why I want to publicly, because I know a lot of candidates are in here, uh, please respond to the chamber so that we can register you and be prepared for that. But it's October 11th, 6 to 7.30, uh, at the Shirts Civic Center. 
And I, what I'd like to do is I brought something uh, that I'm going to read, and then I can distribute it to you so you all have copies, but uh, this is the last thing I have tonight. Mayor, Mr. Kessel, and City Council, for several months I have come before you, as well as worked with our EDC and local small businesses, getting input and ideas about what has come to be known as Local Flavor Small Business Incentive Grant. I have lived in Schertz for over 44 years and seen it grow and expand. Even though you would think it would not affect me so much anymore, having seen so many passings and closings of businesses such as Riedel's, Obasi's, and Goofy Golf, to the more recent surprise closings of Honey Snacks Barkery, Pino's Palette, and Encanto Mexican Restaurant, but it does. Especially having shared in the joy of a grand opening and all the hopes and dreams of a new business and the potential of what it could be. The local flavor small business grant will not save the business world or maybe impact it with a force that say several hundreds of thousands of dollars would, but I feel it will impact in a much deeper way, a personal way that is encouragement and shows small businesses do matter in shirts and that the local flavor dismantles the belief that all the city cares about is the next big corporation that is to come here. It dashes the belief that quality of life businesses do not matter reinforces the fact that without our quality of life businesses, there would be no reason to choose shirts over another city to live in. Our quality of life businesses build strong community and strong memories that shape what our town was and has grown to be, a family community, a quality community, and one that sees that all business is important to the success and future of our city. Any longtime resident, as well as their now grown children, I bet, could share with you memories that were created and now cultivated with their own children of things they did in shirts in small businesses that are no longer around. Weekends at the Starlight Drive-In Theater, ice cream cones at Obasi's, to running to True Value Hardware for that extra bag of nails. The thing that these memories have in common is that they are all small businesses that built the framework of what we wanted shirts to be and have grown from. I am proud of all the wonderful memories I have of growing up in shirts, and I am so glad that I have a chance to maybe be a catalyst for support and change that will continue to allow new generations to have their special memories of time spent now in our city with our small businesses. I humbly ask that you please consider including the local flavor incentive program into next year's budget, unfunded, but with the hope that if funding is found, this program can start. If funding is not found in the 2018 budget, then perhaps in the 2019 budget, it can be considered again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to have a point of privilege and an opportunity to, to read a statement um, since we have this issue um, that has come before us. And I'd also like to give Mr. Thompson an opportunity to address the, the crowd in the chamber as well, the council chambers. I don't have any uh, objection. Uh, I'll, I, I apologize before you, you begin though. I, I, there is a white Ford truck out front Tag GST 5492 with your lights on. I don't know whose it is. I don't want your bat. The white Ford truck. Yeah. 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 You don't want to get stranded. So um, with, uh, I would just I would just remind anyone that has anything to say that be mindful of the Texas Open Meetings Act and its provisions. Um, if you're commenting on anything that's not already on the agenda, um, that's still the, the, the law of the land. Mr. Edwards, the floor is yours. Mayor, uh, appearing, I'm, I'm going to read a statement that I've written, and I want you guys just to bear with me here, and I hope you guys will hear it from your heart and from your, and, and just deep down in your soul. Appearing better than others is always dangerous, but even more dangerous than that is to appear to have no faults or weaknesses. Let us, accept the fact that, let us accept the fact that nothing is certain in this world, and none of us are guaranteed to see tomorrow. So let, let us let grace prevail. So let he who is without sin cast the first stone. As a community leader, as a business owner, as a father, as a, as a husband, and a brother to many of all walks of life, I understand the emotions and the psychological harm that can happen with a social media post. I have trained my kids to be aware of pressing enter without thoughtfully considering all the consequences and ramifications. I have always been 
a church and surrounding community first type of leader. It's not about the city of church, any position I hold, nor personal gain or gratification. And it certainly cannot be about one mistake. I say, I say this because my sins are too numerous, too numerous to count. And I too have fallen short and don't have the mercy or the grace or the forgiveness provided by an almighty God. I am all in for church as a community and I'm all in for a positive pressure to create a culture of excellence. I will always encourage open, openness and transparency with our leadership and our citizens. An unfortunate Facebook post can't be our defining moment. I believe the way that you carry yourself will, oft, will often determine how you're treated. In the long run, appearing racially insensitive or demeaning will make people disrespect you. A leader respects himself and inspires the same sentiment in all and even others. By acting with respect of others and confident in your power, when and when not to use them, you make yourself destined to be called for a higher office and a higher purpose. I will protect the shield that says church, and I don't believe that Councilman Thompson or anyone else on the council or in this community will want anything less. I'd like to give Councilman Thompson an opportunity to address the council in either open or, or closed session, and then publicly address the attendees in the council chamber. Thank you. Before, I, before we go on, I'm going to, um, when I consider uh, uh, the council rules of procedure uh, at a time like this, I'm going to state that we are now at item number 13, announcements by the mayor and council members, and will afford an equal opportunity to any and all council members who would like to speak at this time under item number 13. At this time, I'll recognize Mr. Thompson uh, if he would like to make any statement or comment at all. Thank you. One of my goals in coming on council was to be a person of integrity and compassion whose overall goal was to help bring people together for the common good. I believe I have accomplished that the majority of the time I've been up here. Tonight marks the fourth time in my life that I have been called racist. The first time I was called racist was in Georgia. My wife and I had gone there to start a church, or excuse me, be with the church. It was in a white community in a black neighborhood. We reached out to the neighborhood. When my one-year review came up, all my numbers were up, everything was going good. I was called into the by the leaders of the church and forgive the language I'm going to use, but it was exactly what was said to me. We're firing you because you're encouraging to drink our water and use our, our, our bathrooms by bringing these black kids into the church. I was fired on the spot for reaching out to blacks, for reaching out to the neighborhood, for reaching out to children of all color, and called racist for that. The second time I was called racist was also in a church. We were singing, Jesus loves the little children. And a person came up to me and said, I did not realize you were so racist. And I go, what do you mean? You're singing a song of red and yellow, black and white. But that song shows that you are racist because it does not include the word brown. And so therefore, you and your church must be racist and not want Hispanics in your church. Third time I was called racist in my life was a few years ago when the Black Lives Matter did begin to come up. I believe that all lives are created in the image of God. And hence I said, all lives matter online. And for that, I was criticized for being racist. Tonight marks the fourth time. The post that I shared was not meant in any form or manner to be racist. It was inappropriate. A friend of mine, personal friend and Facebook friend, told me about it. I looked at it and I said I, I had never thought of it in that light. I apologized online to him, deleted the chair. 
didn't think much about it. He accepted my apology. We both went on. The furor over this Facebook post erupted when a former councilman put it online. My question is, why would you have edited it so carefully as to leave out the online apology? It's an interesting question. But that's for Mr. Azaz to answer and not for me. Because it was an online post that was inappropriate, I chose to ask apologies online. Because it involves the chamber, because it involves the city council, I will seek that same apology before the chamber and before the council. If a person knows who I am, they realize I am not racist. For the last 40 plus years, I have tried to bring people of all color, all gender, all background, all social class into the body of Christ. Because I believe Christ and his church is the great equalizer on this earth. That is my goal. I will continue to strive to reach every group because the book of Revelation tells us that one day every knee, every tongue, every tribe, every gender, every race are going to bow before Jesus Christ. Ultimately, we answer to him. Tonight, I answer to my Father in heaven. I answer to my spouse, my children, to the citizens of this community. And I thank you for the opportunity of hearing me. Mr. Gutierrez. As a city council member, I am held accountable and have a responsibility to address comments posted on Facebook. Council, mem council member Thompson has realized his comments were interpreted as insensitive and has taken full responsibility for his actions. Councilman Thompson has apologized for making these remarks. It is normal to question ourselves in situations wondering whether we heard the person right or if it was just a joke. The true question is how this person normally interacts with others, his character, his integrity, unselfishness, and compassion. I have known Councilman Thompson since elected to this position, and he has personally assisted me in my transition to this new role. Mr. Thompson has earned my respect as a person, a businessman, and city council. He has a willingness to do what is best for the city. He has supported our police and fire department. He has supported our military and our senior citizens. Mr. Thompson has a good heart. Some citizens have requested Church City Council to take some kind of action regarding this matter. But be aware, politics and elections overinflate actions. Many, many attempt to take advantage to discredit their less desirable candidate. Many of us have made comments we later regret. I can appreciate how hurt and angry, how frustrated and how disappointed many of you may be. I appreciate his apology and his willingness to make amends. And we all know an apology is the super, glue, the super glue of life. Thank you. Anyone else? Dr. Kaiser? I hear people all the time say, I'm not racist. And then they put a Facebook post up that is racist. Or they say something that is racist. And they say, but I'm not racist. Now, I'm not saying that Council Member Thompson is racist. What he put up there was completely inappropriate. And when I hear someone say, well, if someone hadn't reposted, well, it, it's motivated by politics, that means that that person is not taking responsibility. The post was made by Council Member Thompson. That's the bottom line. He put it up there. That's where the blame lies. I'm not going to put the blame on someone who responded and said it's inappropriate. I'm not going to put the blame on someone who, you know, took a screenshot. That's not where the blame lies. Someone needs to take responsibility. And hopefully he is. I don't know. Because when someone does something like that, and then I see a post online, even the apology saying what I learned was, and I'm paraphrasing, was that I need to be careful about what I post on Facebook. 
For me, that is not an apology. That is saying I got caught, people didn't like what I posted, I need to be careful what I post. So someone with integrity takes responsibility. And yes, I believe in grace, I believe in compassion. But like I've taught my children, when you do something wrong, there are consequences. And right now what I'm hearing is there should be no consequences. Let's just accept an apology. I don't know many people who can go before a judge after robbing a bank and say, I'm sorry, and the judge says, hey, okay, apology accepted. Bye. There are consequences. When we do something wrong, there should be consequences. Yes, we have all made mistakes. I agree. But when we don't take responsibility, when we don't have any consequences for those poor actions and bad judgment, we do, I don't think we learn that much. And I'm sorry, to just be able to sit up here and say, I'm sorry, I don't think is a consequence. If no others have any comments under item 13, I will return to it at the end of the meeting. Carpenter. And yes, Mr. Tom, um, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Crawford. I have a question. Are we going to discuss this in any kind of an executive session tonight? We're not posted to do so. Can we post to discuss it next week? The reason I ask, is <clears throat> like my fellow councilwoman here, and maybe Mr. Edwards, who spent, what, six years in the Air Force? Mr. Gutierrez spent 15 years in the Air Force. I spent 38 years in the Navy. That comment about being responsible for our actions, we lived in the military. Mr. Huff in the audience back here, some other members in this audience who spent time in the military. We lived under two sets of rules. Uniform Code of Military Justice and the U.S. Civil and Criminal Code, and Mr. Zeck can correct me on the right phrasing for that. We were held. Mr. Zeck was in the Navy also, correct? Yes. So being held to a higher standard and being responsible for our actions, be accountable, being accountable, and sitting here we have a level of authority that we need to be responsible for what we do we need to be accountable for how we do it. And I lived that way for 38 years, and yes, I made some mistakes. We all make mistakes. But when I did make a mistake, I said, I made the mistake. Here's what I did to fix it. Let's keep going. If there's a penalty, I'll take the penalty. So I think the discussion of what do we do when somebody makes an apology on a serious issue, that's fine and acceptable to make an apology. But there is a consequence to this. A lady walked out of this chamber a while ago. She was not happy. I hated to see that. So the question is, do we need more discussion, Mr. Davis? Mr. Edwards? So hold on. Larson? What I'll do is um, when we come back around to item number 12, where we have an, an agenda item for placing items on a future agenda, let's bring it up then, and then if there's no objection, then it'll be placed on the agenda. Thank you, sir. Very good. Anyone else? I have no other comments, and we'll go back to our regular agenda at this time. Next item we have on the agenda this evening is consent agenda items. Item number one, the minutes, approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of August 29, 2017. Item number two, ordinance 17T29, an ordinance by the City Council of the City of Church, Texas, authorizing an amendment to the fiscal year 2016-2017 general fund to create and fund four additional crossing guard postings, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict with this ordinance and providing an effective date. Now, either one of these two items need to be pulled and handled individually. If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. moved. Second. I, my right ear caught Mr. Davis. I did not catch who seconded the motion. Mr. Thompson, a motion for Mr. Davis, a second for Mr. Thompson. Any other comments or questions from council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Next item that we have on the agenda this evening under discussion items is Ordinance 17T30, an ordinance adopting a budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2017 and ending September 30, 2018, in accordance with the Charter of the City of Church, Texas, providing for the filing of the budget 
providing that this ordinance shall be cumulative of all ordinances, providing a severability clause, and providing an effective date. Evening, Mr. Walters. Good evening. I have the same layout of presentation as before, so I have all three agenda items um, back to back in the tonight's session. So this PowerPoint will cover all three. I'll stop at the appropriate points when there needs to be discussion and or action. So I'll start with the review of the proposed uh, budget for FY 17-18 for our fiscal year. Some of the budget highlights include a classification and, and compensation study uh, action uh, for the year three recommendation of that plan, which are targeted pay adjustments on positions found to be below market, uh, the below market target set by council. Um, includes the opening of fire station number three. It includes 22 new personnel. It includes a new permit software. It includes some defar uh, deferred park maintenance. It also includes a new shirt spin event. It includes additional uh, vehicle and equipment replacement uh, that we've seen uh, higher than this year, the current year. It includes uh, redundant uh, water loop lines in uh, the southern area of Shirts to provide continuous service of water. It includes uh, 1103 utility line relocation uh, to in uh, concert with the widening of the road and includes some additional drainage channel maintenance. Uh, the new personnel include uh, four crossing guards, which were just approved. Actually, this is not additional crossing guards. These are the same ones that were approved to hire early uh, since the school, school year does not always line up with our fiscal year. Actually, it never lines up with the fiscal year. I apologize. Uh, it includes two patrol officers, a plans examiner, a code enforcement officer. Uh, the final six firefighters needed to open station number three it includes three EMTs, three water and sewer servicemen, and two drainage workers. Uh, one update uh, for the electronic sign repair. Uh, staff will be proposing to council that the uh, sign be repaired and replaced with funding left over from the 2006 bond repair funds, uh, which were used for the recreation center windows. Uh, sorry. I can't hear you. There's $108,000 left over. This would cost about $50,000. Sorry. Um, uh, repair the recreation center windows so the funding is there and the, the bond funds do say that uh, the funds can be used for city um, complex repairs and renovations so we believe this would qualify under that uh, that area uh, we were holding off allocating these this portion of the funds um, until we get to the until all of the other projects within that fund was were completed so we knew how much we had left um, the rec center windows have been completed as well as the uh, the other main item from that issuance was the uh, aquatic center so both of those projects were completed and these funds were uh, identified as additional funds that could be put towards additional building replacements um, even beyond what we identified for council back at the July retreat so that was an update for the fix of the electronic sign repair um, I wanted to include it in the budget presentation because one of the items that did not make the uh, the budget uh, from our previous discussion and list included the electronic sign repair and replacement coming out of the general fund um, so we were able to find funding available applicable funding that's available elsewhere and so we will not be considering that as part of the, the budget or staff will not be recommending that that be considered as part of the budget but instead recommended as part of the um, building repair funds from the 2006 bond so with that there's no actual action that's necessary from council at this time for, for this item when we come forward with the contract and the proposed funding level, council will make, take action then on that. Uh, this last November, this uh, staff also covered uh, or conducted the first ever citizen survey. Um, and from that survey, four areas were identified as uh, necessary to receive the, um, the most emphasis over the next few years. One being police services, the next being parks and trails and stormwater runoff and the enforcement of city code and ordinances. Uh, each of those areas were attempted to be addressed in this proposed budget uh, for the police services we added two uh, police officers parks and trails we have a focus on uh, the park facility maintenance and includes a and uh, also have a new trail coming online next year with uh, federal grant or the, uh, the grant that we were awarded uh, stormwater runoff we have about 1.3 million dollars of drainage channel maintenance and upgrades and we're adding two drainage workers and the enforcement of city codes and ordinances we are adding a code enforcement officer 
Uh, staff conducted community budget presentations on August 10th, 16th, and 17th uh, throughout the city. Some responses and feedback that we received for the presentation was very informative. Um, the other areas of emphasis included more spending on parks personnel and park upgrades in the southern and northern areas of shirts, in particular the extreme areas. Um, that 15, 18 improvements could not come fast enough. Um, additional or street improvements should be a priority for the city of Shirts, and then uh, we should have additional police on patrol. So the all funds expense budget, the budget that uh, the staff had proposed to city council, uh, was $76.5 million. 41% was the general fund, 29% was the water and sewer fund, 12% uh, was EMS, and then 9% was the INS fund. So with that, on this slide shows the total expenses on the left and the net change in fund balance or fund equity proposed for each of the funds. Uh, some of the funds, like the park and tree mitigation towards the middle, are project-based fund or bottom are project-based funds. So their their revenues build up and then they are spent down. They don't have ongoing um, regular operational expenses. Uh, the drainage fund normally is an operational fund, but this year we've been saving up the fund balance to a point where we consider we actually can do some good um, upgrades and improvements. So we're spending that down to an appropriate level. And then the uh, the general fund was the other one that we are proposing taking money out of the reserves this year. Uh, to fund uh, additional programs uh, that we would normally have to wait a few years. And all that is in line with the proposed fund balance policy, which we'll touch on. So this is a chart uh, from 2007 to 2018 showing the um, overall approved dollar amounts for the general fund budgets. So in 2017, we were just under 15 million. In 2018, we were just over 30 million as, as a, uh, approval. You'll notice in the recession area about 2009-10, we actually increased the budget in those two years. And then since then, we've been growing pretty steadily over the, over the time period. Under the revenue section, uh, for the general fund, we'll focus on that one for now. Uh, total revenues proposed are 31.3. Property taxes make up about 38%. Sales taxes make up 24%. Uh, franchises and fees make up about 7% each. And then fund transfers are at 14%. Um, and with that, I'll touch on that one. That one's a little bit higher. I'll touch on that one in a second as well. On the general fund expense side, we propose a budget, again, $31.3 million, 22% uh, is general government, 18% is internal services, um, IT, finance, HR, fleet, facilities, 24% uh, is police, and 15% is fire rescue. So the general fund revenue uh, estimated from taxes, fees, and service contracts are actually about $29.8 million. The reason the transfer I pointed on the other slide that was greater this year was we do have a transfer from fund balance about $1.4 million that we're proposing to, to offset uh, the additional expenditures and the expanded programs. The beginning fund balance is estimated to be $11.2 million at the end of September, at the end of our fiscal year. Uh, with the $1.4 million withdrawal, uh, we're est estimating that uh, September 2018 will have $9.8 million left in the reserves. If the council adopts a 26% fund balance requirement uh, policy uh, in two items, that would make a minimum requirement of $8 million, and we'd still be about $1.8 million over our minimum requirement. So this proposed budget does assume a 26% fund balance requirement, and choices made in this budget are made to reduce the fund balance to 26% by 2022. And it does so by front-loading additional hiring, deferred hiring, and deferred maintenance this year instead of having to wait a year or two to bring those personnel online um, or to make those improvements. So in the five-year forecast, this is what it looks like. Uh, with the actions, we'll, we'll ask council to take tonight. The FY 50, uh, 2018 will take $1.4 million from the reserve. 19 is currently estimated to take 700,000, and 2020 will take about 584,000. Um, and then 21 and 22, start putting a little bit money back. Uh, the fund balance percentage is estimated to go from 39.5 to 31 to 28, all the way down to 26% by 2022. Uh, so staff target was to do this over a longer period of time uh, in case there's any additional emergency items or if uh, recession hits. We have to make some changes so we don't get below the 26% requirement. We do still have time for that. And going forward, it'll be easier to manage um, one year staying constant than it will be to buy down uh, in addition to any um, 
surprises we may have coming forward. Touching on the water and sewer fund, a contribution to Shirt Seguin Local Government Corporation uh, will increase about $520,000 next year. Uh, the waste contractor fees are our solid waste. Um, our garbage costs against the city uh, will increase 3% plus new population, estimated about $432,000. Uh, sewer treatment cost on the city will increase about 7% plus new population, estimated about $325,000. And then we also have some capital replacement of three hundred eighty-seven, dollars including a, a, a sewer cleaning truck, a uh, truck with a bed crane, and then two service trucks. Uh, the city uh, would propose a small debt issuance uh, to fund the water loop lines for continuous service it includes the tank painting at Nacogdoches and Live Oak Towers and for the FM 1103 uh, utility relocations. We're estimating that to be about 144000 estimated annual payment um, and that is currently built into their operation budget. Uh, we also propose a three-man crew of $174,000 and then contract out the hydrant testing for all 1,600 uh, hydrants we have throughout the city. Under the EMS fund, we have proposed hiring three EMTs, about $90,000. Uh, change a billing clerk to a billing specialist of $11,000. Includes merit and class and comp adjustments, as we had mentioned before, about $200,000. And I, I point this one out on, on this particular fund uh, because if you look at it um, directly, it does stand out more than the other ones, but they are not the only ones receiving those, those changes. Under the drainage fund, uh, includes two drainage workers, and some of the drainage channel maintenance includes some concrete work. They provide, they put on concrete on the sides of the uh, drainage ditches. Um, helps with uh, kind of retaining the wall and the structure integrity of the sides of the ditches. As well, it makes it easier to maintain and mow. Also includes uh, some desilting uh, funds. So as the, we have a rain event, but water runs down into the drainage ditch as it is meant to do. But when it does, it takes some additional topsoil with it down into the ditch. And then that topsoil gathers there in the bottom and actually raises the floor of the ditch over time. So every so often we need to go in and scrape out the bottom of the ditch to increase that capacity back up. It also includes an underground drainage channel, about 136,000. Um, also includes, you'll see Lower Seguin Road Bridge is back in there for next year. Uh, we'll still have some expenses left for that um, coming up. Any final expense incurred by the city uh, will be offset by Cibolo uh, reimbursement of 50% of the funds. Uh, before council makes an action, uh, there could be uh, some discussion to, to think about um, some of the non-funded program and position examples. Uh, these are in no particular funding or recommended order. Uh, we just wanted to bring them back to uh, for council for consideration um, of any changes to the budget um, to fund any of these uh, particular programs, park workers, recreation coordinator, uh, coordinator agenda software, the local flavor or small business assistance, additional library materials uh, was requested and by a citizen, um, social media archiving or the OpenGov program. Uh, this is not the entire list by any means. Council has seen the full list and it was uh, closer to 100 items um, when you break it all down. Um, but funding any additional items at this time would require some sort of cut or reduction in a different program within the city. Uh, so if council is looking to make any changes, they'll also have to uh, consider the impacts of those changes uh, that they would have. Uh, otherwise, uh, council could uh, either fund it as a, as a non-funded item, and it wouldn't necessarily go into the budget directly, but we would keep an eye out for any of these items going forward. If we identify additional funding or um, savings, possible savings in any of the other areas or other programs that we have, it would open up the opportunity for council to fund um, some other item on the list more towards the mid-year. Um, or if we wanted to wait and consider any of these items at a future budget, um, 2019, we could do so. We could also hold off and then consider that with all the other uh, requested programs uh, at that time. So, um, again, these were in no particular order, just sort of a general um, example list, trying to get examples from all the different departments um, that we had come through to cap give council an idea and, and remind them what uh, we tried to fit in as much as we could within the budget and there are some items that we were not able to fund with our um, tax rates. Um, um, or if council so wishes, um, we would accept the budget as is and um, staff would come back with a recommendation in the following years. So with that, 
will up to our counsel for Indeed. Questions for uh, Mr. Larson? Well, on the discussion items, I wanted to, um, in, in the nature of full disclosure, some people from some local business owners in the chamber, uh, they asked that there's that local flavor funding policy and that we consider maybe moving it up as an unfunded priority or to consider for future businesses. And when they asked that, I was kind of an unlikely ally. I'm kind of libertarian leaning. I don't think that any business should get government money. Um, the problem is big businesses get government money all the time. And while we probably shouldn't do that, all of the other communities around us do. And so when I look at our policies, I think that the Economic Development Corporation does a great job because the reality is we have to compete for business and the market as it exists. And many times these larger corporations, they have economies of scale that give them advantages through government already with tax breaks and uh, kickbacks. And I think when we look at the community of shirts and the desire that we have to have kind of a local culture and flavor, um, being able to consider as in future budgets um, made sense to me. And I felt that the hard work of our EDC and the church chamber made it where it's worthy for us to at least consider uh, that item is a higher priority, unfunded, of course. I don't think this is the year to change it. And I know it's always a challenge because the pie is only so big and everybody wants a bigger slice. But when we look at creating a competitive business environment, it makes sense to have some sort of proportionality in terms of um, encouraging and incentives for businesses large and small. So uh, that's, that's my request that we consider that, not as an adjustment to this year's budget, but uh, to be on the the table of conversation for future budgets or when m money comes available. Mr. Edwards. I have a couple of questions, actually. Can you go back to the slide where you have the, um, the actual spreadsheet? Okay, right here, right here. Okay, so if, can you show me on the spot, can you adjust the, um, can you adjust the presentation to show me $10,000 in the budget for um, if we grant this program this year? and $20,000 for years two, three, four, and five, up to 2022. I'm, I'm trying to get to a point here. And the reason why, um, I have a couple of questions. We're talking about 535,000 for desilting, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's what we're, in the drainage channels. Have we even considered, and this is thinking outside the box to help us all get to a common goal, have we even considered maybe selling the field to a local landowner, because some people need to bring their land out of flood zones and that's happening right now all over. So if, if you sell that field, or are we taking, are we taking that field somewhere, Mr. Gessel? Are we utilizing it for our own use? So the silt is a fairly high organic uh, content, and it's not super desirable for uh, a lift type fill where you'd want to have more of a select fill. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't have quite the market. We probably end up paying to have it hauled off if we don't uh, put it on one of our own properties. Okay, so, so that, that takes care of that. So here's what I'm thinking. We're using monies right now for, for the um, historical preservation, right? And we're giving people an opportunity to do things with their homes. Okay, the home in church is, is not producing the same net of revenue that the business owner is producing. Would, would everybody agree to that? So if that is the case, why not stipulate showing ten thousand dollars in year eighteen, twenty thousand, and, and let us see what those numbers are and what it does to our reserve fund? Can you show me that? I can draw it out for you. I don't have the spreadsheet. This is just a, a, a photo. Okay. Uh, but if we did ten thousand dollars in eighteen, the reserve funding uh, would probably be around twenty six percent as well. If we did it for five years at fifty thousand dollars, we'd probably be below twenty six percent this time um, and we also have as for the other example um, the city does have quite a bit of restricted revenue here at the city so if you look back at the uh, the all funds expense only about 40 percent you could say of our city's revenue is actually unrestricted and can be spent on anything the uh, historical grant program uh, was authorized under the hotel occupancy tax yeah. improvements um, which have very limited uses and one of them is historical preservation um, and could not be used for general business purposes. Or sure. purpose, so. Okay, so I was trying to think outside of the box and maybe spread some money around over the different programs because it seems like we have a wish list for 100 different items and we have no means of funding them. So that's the problem. 
Okay. So we're back to the drawing board. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly agree with uh, Councilman Edwards on, on all these things. I, I kind of think, though, that, that the items we're talking about now are kind of a, a moot point now with where we're at on the proposed 2017-18 budget because we didn't include it in there. Uh, so it's obviously going to have to be something that we're going to adjust f uh, fire for in the near future. Uh, back on the 2nd of May, we had a great presentation from EDC that talked about these issues. And I've got some notes. I'd like to have proposed something in item 12 for a future uh, council meeting where we can address these small business options and then get it on the agenda where we can talk about you know possible uh, funding streams or timelines uh, as we go forward. Okay. Anyone else? Does not appear that there, there is. So, given that, is there a motion to approve Ordinance 17 T30 on so February? Moved. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Gutierrez, a second from Mr. Davis. Any other comments or questions for Council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 I have seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening is item number four. Ordinance 17T31, an ordinance approving the appraisal role, setting the tax rate, levying and assessing general and, spe and special ad valorem taxes for the use and support of the municipal government of the city of Schertz, Texas, apportioning the levies for specific purposes, providing a severability clause, and providing an effective date. Mr. Walters. Good evening. Uh, for the budget and the tax rate, the city of Schertz did hold two public hearings on August 22nd and August 29th. For the 2017 property values, the total taxable value for the city of Schertz for 2017 is $3.37 billion. Overall, that's a $101 million increase from last year's uh, taxable property. Uh, $84 million of that came from new development or new construction. So here is a chart of the property tax rate breakdown or property tax bill breakdown for each county here in Schertz. Um, Schertz is in three counties, so each of these tax rates, overall tax rates, is applicable to our citizens. Um, the teal color at the bottom is actually the city portion of your tax, uh, tax bill. The yellow would be the school district. The red would be counties. The black above that is also a county road. And if you live in Bear County, there's also additional taxing jurisdictions, including the San Antonio River Authority, the University Health System, and the college. Overall, the shirts uh, or municipal tax rate is about 20% 20, 20 of the overall tax rate. So we get the proposed values uh, by July 25th each year from the appraisal districts. Uh, they have to have gone through so many of their protested properties uh, by that date. Once the uh, taxing jurisdictions receive those tax, um, tax rolls, the state has us calculate two different tax rates. Uh, the first one is the effective rate, which is the rate at which on average keeps the tax bill the same as the year prior or raises the same amount of money on existing properties. So if the city had no new development, uh, no new development, same, same properties in both years, the effective tax rate would raise the exact same tax revenue as it did the year before. Uh, the second rate as is calculated is the rollback rate, which is the highest rate council can adopt under its sole authority, basically. Uh, they can adopt a rate higher than the rollback rate, but if they do, citizens can petition and hold a vote, and the vote passes, the tax rate gets reduced back to the rollback rate. So on the next slide, I'll show you the city's current rate and then the proposed maximum rate um, that was set by council on August 8th. Uh, so the effective rate for 2017 was 49.10. The rollback rate was 50.83. Uh, the current tax rate is 4911, and the proposed maximum tax rate that council set was 4910. And staff has pro uh, proposed a budget um, at the 4910 rate. Uh, for information purposes, one penny is equal to about 336,000 of revenue, or $21.18 on the average home. And the difference between the current and effective rate is about $3,363 uh, difference in revenue. Uh, our city's tax rate is actually broken down into two separate tax rates. One is called the M&O, or maintenance and operation, and all the money raised from this tax rate goes into the general fund uh, to fund the daily operations of our police, fire, EMS, and other uh, municipal services. Um, the 
proposed MNO rate is 32.48, which is higher than the current rate of 31.68, uh, but the INS, or the second rate, the interest in sinking, which goes to pay all of the city's debt, uh, decreases from 1743 to 1662. Overall, the tax rate changes from 49.11 to 49.10. At the 49.10 rate, uh, the estimated 2016 tax bill was $1,005, and the 49.10 would charge the average homeowner uh, $1,040, or an estimated $35 annual increase. Uh, the $35 increase, even though we're going with the effective rate, so we should keep the tax bills the same, uh, it's a higher rate due to lower commercial values that we saw this year, including commercial per, uh, personal property, uh, which was due to inventory levels held on uh, certain sites, as well as an overall uh, value decrease seen throughout Guadalupe County um, on the machinery and equipment that's inside all the buildings that we also get to tax. So all the big machinery um, and equipment to produce the products in our big commercial warehouses, uh, we do get to tax those. And just like driving a car off the lot, five, ten years down the line, you're lucky if you get half the value of that or try to sell it back for less. Um, so this year was one of the few years we saw an actual decrease in this particular area, um, but it was a trend we saw throughout Guadalupe County and is um, depreciation or lower value of the same equipment. We didn't have any new businesses come in and add a lot of value, and we didn't have the existing businesses replace um, their aging equipment, which would bring the value back up. Uh, we also noticed a higher residential exemption seen on the certified tax rolls this year than in years prior. So those combined uh, for the higher rate on the average home, even though we're bringing in the same tax revenue on existing properties in both years. So historically, in 2006, the MNO or maintenance and operation tax rate was at 3345. In 2017, we're proposing a rate of 3248, so still lower than where we were in 2006. 2007 saw a great uh, steep drop in the uh, MNO tax rate, and it happened at the, the time when two things were going on in the city. Uh, the first one is the recession was starting to hit, and the second one was we had just issued a, uh, or had a, held a bond election, and we started issuing a, a lot of uh, uh, GO bonds or voter approved bonds for bond projects. Um, I'll go on the next slide. So in 2007, you see the INS rate jump up. Uh, so staff and council at the time felt it was appropriate to lower the MNO rate to compensate for the higher INS to prevent it's a huge increase on the tax rate for the citizens. Uh, so in 2006, we went from an INS rate of $0.09 cents to an INS rate of $0.15. Cents. And that was even being funded from the INS's fund, uh, from its fund balance or its bank account. So that $0.15 cents did not cover all of the debt service costs that the city incurred. Uh, we were raising some money and then paying for the remainder out of the reserves, out of its um, bank account, if you will. So for the next five years, we're actually drawing down the uh, bank account for the INS until two things happened. Um, 2010, we held another bond election, so we started issuing additional bonds. At the same time, the INS fund ran out of money in the bank account, so it could no longer um, buy down or reduce artificially the tax rate anymore. So over a two-year period, we saw another five-cent increase in the INS rate. Uh, since that time, uh, staff has been looking at a long-term debt model, trying to time new issuances and structure the new issuances in ways that would not cause a huge swing in the tax rate. Uh, we did hold another bond election in 2015, and we've been issuing uh, annual CO bonds for infrastructure and maintenance and improvements um, during that time period as well and we've actually saw a decrease in the tax rate rather than additional increases. When you put the two charts on top of one another, uh, we'll see about uh, 2006 to 2017, we have increased the overall tax rate since the, during that time. Um, but if you see the orange part on the bottom is relatively constant, while the yellow, yellowish part on top is the part that's been growing, which is not uncommon to have a higher INS rate in a growing community to fund new infrastructure uh, throughout the cities. So this is the overall calendar for the budget and tax rate adoption. Uh, we are now at the September 5th, the second from the bottom. This is the second vote and adoption, and both of these items will go into effect on October 1st this year. 
So with that, I will turn it over to Council for discussion and action. Thank you, sir. Questions for uh, Mr. Walters? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Larson? I move that we approve ordinance number 17T31. Second. Second. Um, I have a motion for Mr. Larson, a second for Mr. Gutierrez. Any other comments or questions from Council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes and no nays. The motion carries. Next item we have on the agenda this evening is item number five, ordinance 17M34, an ordinance authorizing the amendment of GASB 54 fund balance standards, applications, and policy of the city of Shirts and related matters in connection therewith. Mr. Walters. <coughs> the city of Shirts has a fund balance policy uh, that we established just after the last recession. Um, this was uh, mandated or recommended, let's say, by the uh, Governmental Accounting Standards Board, or GASB as we call it, a board that oversees accounting practices for local um, government. And it had us identify uh, five different types of fund balances. Uh, one was non-spendable, which is leftover inventory. Uh, we own it, we don't owe it to anybody, uh, but we did spend money on it, uh, so it's ours. The uh, second one was a restricted fund balance, so these amounts uh, put in restricted fund balances can only be spent for their specific purposes as stipulated by the external, by external sources. Um, like hotel occupancy tax, the state allows us to collect it, but they also dictate how it can be spent. Uh, so no action by this council could allocate or use those funds for any other purpose. So we call it a restricted fund balance. Uh, the third level is committed fund balance. So uh, funds in this category can only be used for uh, specific purposes, but instead of being dictated by an outside source, uh, city council is the one which are determining how these particular funds can be spent, uh, usually by council ordinance. And we do have a few examples within the city, including the Shirts Seed Fund, uh, which was um, used to be governed by CPS and collected as additional franchise fees on uh, CPS. And they would hold on to the funds, and cities could request funds for that. Uh, when they turned all the money directly over to the city based on how much they were collecting, uh, council had then had. Um, um, authorize the city to collect it, but then dictated that it should only be spent on the similar programs as the previous seed fund. So that's a current example of our committed fund balances. Uh, the fourth is an assigned fund balance, so funds to be used for specific purpose, uh, but no official action was taken, uh, usually set by the city manager. You can allocate uh, different funds to assign purposes, um, but council city manager um, can also change that as often without um, an ordinance to do so. So it's very, that's one much more flexible. And then the last category was unassigned fund balance. So it's all the fund balance left um, that do not fall into any other categories um, and is free for being uh, spent or allocated as, as necessary. Uh, all through council approval, not um, through the budget process, but. So the target fund balance, the, the policy sets uh, to keep the unrestricted, so the committed the assigned and the unassigned, every, all the funds that council can uh, dictate how it can be spent um, to equal 26% of annual operating expenditures, 1% for a contingency, and 25% to be used in case of a disaster. Uh, the content, uh, for using as a contingency item, uh, so it can only be used as for council action, so staff would come to council if they had a contingency item, and it would be used for any unexpected expenditures um, or to be used as an onset of re uh, recession to prevent our fund balance from dropping below the 25%. So it gives a little bit of a cushion to allow us to turn the ship um, before we dip below the 25% uh, due to a recession type of event. So it does still allow for some uh, flexibility. Uh, for disaster to dip below the 25% would require a declaration of a disaster uh, must be issued by uh, our mayor uh, and would be used to provide rescue operations or relief efforts and could also be used to maintain city services during reconstruction if city revenues are significantly affected by the disaster if it wiped out a big commercial district and we lost sales taxes and or property tax revenue um, due to lower valuations. Uh, we would be able to use that 25% to subsidize our revenue um, for the short term. If, if a long term um, implementation uh, or it took us a longer time to actually recover uh, from that to a point where we're not even sure we would recover to our previous levels of revenue. Um, other action would be um, recommended uh, to balance the budget at that time. 
uh, provide a different level of, of, of service, um, given a different level of revenues that we would then have to live with. Uh, to replenishment, if the unrestricted fund balance falls below the 26%, a city manager would have to submit a plan to council to restore the fund balance to within the target within five years. And that part is the same as our existing policy. If the fund balance uh, goes over the 26%, uh, which it can do, and the policy allows for it to go over for regular expenditures uh, identified in a five-year budget forecast, so if we had a one little blip on the five-year forecast, we'd be able to accumulate the fund balance over the 26% um, until that event passed, and then we'd be required to make sure it went back down to the 26%. Uh, again, capital improvement plans. Um, again, if we have uh, a specific capital purchase we'd have to make, we were able to save up money for that and then spend it back down. Uh, but again, it would not be a regular capital improvement. And then both accumulation, uh, accumulations would be approved by council during the budget process. If the fund balance unexpectedly goes up above the 26%, uh, staff would then have to use the funds in the following year um, to either enhance services or to reduce the tax rate if we had an unexpected increase in our reserves. So, with that as an overview of the particular items in the fund balance policy. I have any questions or comments from council? Very good questions for Mr. Walters. Appears there's none. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Edwards, a second from Mr. Crawford. Any other comments or questions for council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes, no nays. The motion carries. Thank you. Item number six. Resolution 17R78, a resolution by the City Council of City of Church, Texas, authorizing a memorandum of understanding with the 502nd Air Base Wing and other matters in connection therewith. <coughs> Good evening, Chief. Mayor and Council, and as Mr. Kessel leaves. Um, this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a request by the Air Force to renew an existing MOU, uh, specific, specifically the Security Forces at Joint Base San Antonio and Randolph. Uh, it outlines... Uh, the response at concurrent jurisdiction as well as procedures to be followed uh, in times of assistance or the sharing of information. And it, the staff recommends uh, approval of the renewal. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for the Chief? Not is there a motion to approve the so resolution? Move. Second. second. I think I heard a motion from Mr. Thompson, a second from Dr. Kaiser. Any other comments or questions from Council? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 Got seven ayes and no nays. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Next item I have on the agenda this evening is a resolution, uh, item number seven, resolution 17R79, a resolution by the City Council of the City of Church, Texas, authorizing the purchase of, uh, purchase of ambulances from Siddons Martin Emergency Group and other matters in connection therewith. Good evening, Mr. Mavitt. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, we're looking for approval to purchase two new ambulances from Siddons Martin. Uh, also includes all the equipment that we need, or a, a big chunk of the equipment that we need to, to stock both those ambulances. Very good. Questions for Mr. Mabbitt? Yes, sir. Mr. Davis. Um, and looking at our packet that we've got here, we've got uh, eight ambulances that are online, one's out of service. Uh, as I go down through here, we're talking about buying two new ambulances and getting rid of Unit 261, which is the ninth inoperable one, correct? Yes, sir. And then it says we're getting rid of 266, but the table up above shows 266 is a 2008 model with 100,000 miles, but we plan on keeping unit 260, which is the 2000, with 210,000 miles. Uh, yeah, that was the recommendation by Fleet. Um, I guess it's the engine that's in that ambulance they don't like. It's a 6.0. Uh, a lot of trouble with it in the past, a Ford, as opposed to the 260, which is actually a, a truck chassis. Um, and those things last forever, is what Fleet told me. So it was a recommendation by Fleet. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Crawford? Just to make my brain clear, when I read through this, <clears throat> excuse me, you're asking for a half a million dollars to do this and the $50,000 approval from Mr. Kessel to buy the equipment for the, other, the additional equipment at $45,000 for the two ambulances, is that correct? Yes, sir. So when we get through, we shouldn't have any problem with the total number of dollars or anybody going over a $50,000 limit 
like we've had the past, last last three times we've had to do some things no sir so we're, we're, everything's accounted for our dollars are there yes sir to fix them up so they can drive here and be good to go yes sir and okay thank you very good anyone else is there a motion to approve resolution 17 r 79 so moved second. second motion for mr davis second for mr crawford um any other comments or questions for council and then i'll call for a vote aye 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 Seven ayes, no nays. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Mabbitt. Thank you. Next item on the agenda this evening is item number eight, resolution 17R80, a resolution by the City Council of City of Church, Texas, authorizing the application for a criminal justice division of the Texas Governor's Office grant and other matters in connection therewith. Chief? Yes, sir. This is a, uh, in light of recent events such as the 2016 shooting of the police officers in Dallas, the legislation has authorized a grant process. Uh, to be run by the governor's office, specifically the criminal justice division. This is a grant to purchase rifle resistant body armor. Now this is a reimbursement grant, so it does require that the city purchase the grants and then we would be reimbursed for it. So if we are approved to apply for the grant, and if we are approved for the grant, we will come back at that time with an ordinance to amend the budget for the amount that's approved in the grant. Any questions for Chief Counsel? Just for, just for vests? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve Resolution 17 R80. Second. second. I have a motion for Mr. Edwards, a second for Dr. Kaiser. Any other comments or questions? Call for a vote. Aye. 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 Seven ayes, no nays. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Chief. Uh, item number nine, resolution 17R81, a resolution by the City Council of the City of Shirts, Texas, authorizing an amendment to the professional services agreement with Cobb Findlay and Associates Incorporated relating to engineering design services for the Woman Hollering Creek Wastewater Line Project and other matters in connection therewith. Good evening, Ms. Woodley. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Mr. Kessel. Um, we are finally going to start moving much more quickly on the Woman Hollering Creek Wastewater Line. Uh, we started it quite a while ago. Um, some of you weren't even on Council when we had. Um, quite a bit of um, significant communication and um, studying the situation with respect to particular properties. And we had uh, many landowners concerned about the route that uh, we were taking this wastewater line. Once we finished most of the topographic survey for the line, we realized there were some spots that we could probably adjust to uh, avoid some significant tree groupings, to um, perhaps use some property that uh, was more compatible as far as the land use and the property owners, um, and it would still work and be within um, good safety factors and still um, serve the same sewer shed as the original route. So along with that and with the additional um, alignment alternatives that our consultant looked at, there are of course additional fees uh, that we would need to pay for some additional topographic surveying. I think there's one additional geotechnical boring um, and uh, some alternative uh, project work. Therefore, um, Cobb Fenley has proposed um, to perform the services for $42,741, uh, which is included in the budget for the project. It's already funded. We did have a contingency of $60,000, so we'll be taking the funds out of that money to pay for the additional services needed. Now, the route that is included in your packet, there's an exhibit that shows the original route and the proposed route, so you can see the two spots kind of at the top end of the line and the bottom end of the line where we're looking at adjusting the route. Um, that is not necessarily the absolute set in stone route. It still will have some flexibility. We just need to go out and do the topography along that route, and we will be kicking off in the next couple weeks with the geotechnical borings and the environmental uh, study along this new proposed route. All right, very good. Questions, Council? Mr. Crawford? I spoke to Brian this afternoon. I forgot to call you, so I called Brian. Right. And we had a nice short visit. I was asking him about what you just mentioned about the red lines and the green lines on, the, on, the, on my black and white chart that I can't see. Uh, he indicated that there, what you just said, that there's, this is not cast in stone. And I was just wondering, out of curiosity only as a guess, do you have, y'all have any idea what it might add to the existing cost to get things finished? I, I mean, nothing to hold you to, is it like 
another forty thousand dollars, another two hundred thousand dollars, some kind of. You mean for the construction for the, cost? Yeah, for the. Yeah, for the for, the, for, for what the budgeting would, might end up being. I think the budget at this point is um, is not um, precise enough for it to make much of a difference okay. in the okay. almost $5 million yep. project. Well, yeah, this says 5.9 on there, I think. So that's, if it's not a big number, that's good. I was just curious. So it, it would still be, it's still I mean, estimated I mean, to be within the contingent, the yeah. estimated cost plus the contingency. We'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yes, okay. correct. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Not, is there a motion to approve resolution 17 R81? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Uh, that was a complete tie on number one. Uh, I got a motion from Mr. Davis. I have a second from Mr. That Thompson. Neither comments. Me. Wasn't, no, it was Mr. Gutierrez. I'm sorry. Let me start that again. I have a motion from Mr. Gutierrez, a second from Mr. Thompson. Any other comments or questions from council? Uh, hearing none, I'll call for a vote. Aye. 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 All right, I have seven ayes and no nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on our agenda this evening is a roll call vote confirmation. Dennis? Consent agenda items one and two. Motion was made by Councilmember Davis, seconded by Councilmember Thomas. Member Tim Edwards, Councilmember Davis, Gutierrez Larson, Thompson, Kaiser Crawford voted yes. No one voted no. Motion passed. Item number three, ordinance number 17, T30 on final reading. Motion was made by Councilmember Gutierrez, seconded by Councilmember Davis. Mayor Pro Tim Edwards, Councilmembers Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes, no one voted no. Motion passed. Item number four, ordinance number 17, T31, final reading. Motion was made by Councilmember Larson, seconded by Councilmember Gutierrez. Mayor Pro Tim Edwards, Councilmembers Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes, no one voted no. Motion passed. Item number five, ordinance number 17M35, final reading. Motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, seconded by Council Member Crawford. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes, no one voted no. Motion passed. Item number six, resolution number 17R78. Motion was made by Council Member Thompson, seconded by Council Member Kaiser. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes, no one voted no. Motion passed. Item number seven, 17 R79. Motion was made by Council Member Davis, seconded by Council Member Crawford. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, Council Member Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes, no one voted no. Motion passed. Item number eight, resolution number 17 R80. Motion was made by by Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, seconded by Council Member Kaiser. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes. No one voted no. Motion passed. Item number nine, resolution number 17R81. Motion was made by Council Member Gutierrez, seconded by Council Member Thompson. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards, Council Members Davis, Gutierrez, Larson, Thompson, Kaiser, Crawford voted yes. No one voted no. Motion passed. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the next item on our agenda this evening is a closed session. City Council will meet in closed session under Section 551.071 of the Texas Government Code. Consultation with the City Attorney to discuss A, legal parameters of a municipal regulatory authority under Senate Bill 1004 relating to the deployment of network nodes in public right-of-way and possible legal challenges to the implementation, and B, proposed settlement agreement received in regards to former employee Michael Harris. Uh, it is 738. I'm going to ask the Council's indulgence for a 10 minute recess and we'll convene at 748 in executive session.
All right, the next item that we have on the agenda this evening, actually we're back reconvening into open session. Next item we have on the agenda is item 10A, take any action based on discussions held in closed session under agenda item 10. I don't believe there's any action to take this evening. So no need for a roll call vote confirmation. Item number 11 is announcements by the city manager. Anything further, Mr. Kessel? Nothing further this evening. Item number 12, placing items on future agendas. Mr. Davis and Mr. Crawford in that order. I believe you guys each had something you'd like added. Mr. Davis? Uh, yes, sir. Back in uh, the 2nd of May at our meeting, we had a presentation from EDC uh, that talked about different potential funding programs from either EDC or the general fund. Uh, and in one of the slides they presented us was uh, a recommendation for a proposal for um, economic development uh, opportunities for entrepreneurship, small business, existing business, and target areas. Uh, if we could, and sometime in the future, we'd like to have, I'd, I'd like to see some draft proposals uh, coming from the city staff and EDC on, on what those four areas would look like uh, with recommended amounts, recommended funding streams, uh, if any, and allow us to look at uh, implementing some of those programs for our community. <coughs> All right, Mr. Kessel says he's got that one. Mr. Crawford? I was asking about an executive session to discuss censure. On the and um, uh, the city attorney has said that he... So, to be clear, you can request an... I'm sorry, Mayor. Please. Uh, to be clear, you can, you can request an agenda item. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, and then discuss. you can decide whether or not you want to go into executive session. Of course, yeah, I'm, I'm the sure. individual subject to that has the right to have that discussion in open session. Okay. I'd like to have that on the agenda to, to discuss the censure and the issues of social media again about trying to keep us out of trouble. So we can't, we won't be able to talk about policy matters in executive session. This would be a discussion okay, about an individual and an individual act. Because there's some things that need to be, there's a lack of information in our charter and our ethics thing to talk about what censure is and what it means and what happens. So, and those things need are to be talking about, yeah. I, I think the only legal way, and of course our city attorney may correct me, I think the only thing that we can do is under 551.071 is have a, an executive session scheduled to talk about personnel matters involving a particular council member. Yes. Okay. That's fine. With respect to the issue that we discussed That's earlier this evening. I object to having that on the agenda. So pursuant to that objection, uh, as it says here on item number 12, if objection is made by one or more members of the city council, the mayor shall instruct the city secretary to place on the agenda for the next regular session an item to discuss the merits of placing that item that was objected to on a future agenda for full consideration. So on our next uh, agenda, we will need to have uh, an agenda item for the council to take that action and discuss the merits of having said executive session at a future meeting. I have another request. Yes, sir. I would like to have placed on the agenda a discussion about going back to our previous procedure for putting things on the agenda where anybody can ask to have anything put on the agenda without having to go through a delaying tactic. I object to that. I figured you would. So, um, so uh, what? Well, if, if you want me to get in a hurry, I'll just go with the no, on the I paper just... in front of me. I, I, I'm considering whether or not it would simply be appropriate to uh, uh, have a discussion on our rules of procedure, generally speaking. Okay, I will, uh, on our next agenda, we need an item on the, uh, 
on the agenda for uh, the discussion of whether or not we will put a discussion of the City Council's rules of procedure on a future agenda. We'll Thank you. Anyone else? All right, we'll go to item number 13, announcements by the mayor and council members, and I'll start with Mayor Pro Tem Edwards. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Mr. Davis? Nothing, sir. Mr. Gutierrez? Nothing, sir. Mr. Larson? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I um, unexpectedly witnessed a play this week. It turns out the play was a political drama with some unscrupulous individuals putting selfish ambition above the community good. It was interesting, but uh, distasteful. I give it zero five stars. I'm sad I had to see it, and I hope there's not a sequel. Mr. Thompson? Yes, sir. Dr. Kaiser? Nothing. Mr. Crawford? I attended the TFMA certification for floodplain management this last week with a couple of the city staff. Not a city function, but something I did for the city. Very good. Um, I don't have anything further, so if nothing else by, uh, by staff or from council, then we stand adjourned. <laughs>